Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Wade Acuff and welcome to your Photoshop challenge. Uh, today we're going to be talking about type um, and compositing it onto photographs. You'll notice uh, there in the description below you'll find a source file. Uh, perhaps a mod can throw that in chat as well. There's not really anything in the source file today. Um, but we are going to pull from stock.adobe.com and let's just go ahead and get into it. This is what we're going to see in this source file. But you know what? Um, I wanted you guys to go find your own photos for this. Uh, and you'll see we'll get into some selection tools. But let's go ahead and start. I'm going to double click into our file. And already we've hit a brick wall. But we can't stop. we got to keep going. Uh, let's add some type. Um, just so we can get started, I'm going to press the T or the type tool for the type tool. And just so you know, if you ever are looking at tools over in Photoshop and you see this little arrow uh, in the bottom of the uh, icon, if you press and hold, it will take you to other hidden tools. Or likewise, you can press uh, shift and in this case T or the hotkey and it will cycle through the different tools. And you'll notice some of them are here, but some of them are hidden below my banana. Um, but I'm looking for the vertical type tool. Uh, and we're going to just go ahead and press where I sort of want to place this. We're really going to have to uh, adjust some tracking on this one. But I think I'm typing garage. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so let's go ahead into the uh, character panel, which if you don't have it up, if you go into Windows Character, you can pull it up. Uh, it's already open for me. I want to make sure I'm selected, uh, have selected the type. I'm going to change this to slightly, almost white, almost bright as white, not quite. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Um, let's go. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so here we are, um, getting our garage to, to shape. I think I'm going to take the kerning, uh, the, uh, size down to about 140, and then I'm going to pull this into, um, let's see, let's see, what do we want? Maybe tracking down to negative 200? Yeah, oh, whoa. An extra an extra letter there okay oh hello lots of extra letters how about we just see what we can let's just start there we go there we go now we're finding it now we're getting our groove right okay let's try this again garage there we go uh, and if you're in the type tool and you want to get out of the type tool like if you want to get to the move tool and you're like oh let me press V it's going to type V so if you uh, hit oh, well now we have to type it again uh, if you hit escape it will get you out of the type tool okay so uh, here we are but we want to make sure the perspective is uh, changed slightly um, so uh, what we want to do is kind of I'm going to try and match the brick wall uh, I'm just going to use the transform tool. If you press uh, Control or Command T, it will give us uh, the uh, transform tool. If you press Control when you're in the transform tool, it'll allow you to manipulate these uh, specific positions on the corners uh, or in the middle. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to give us a little bit of. I'm using the mortar joints uh, between the bricks to give us uh, give me a little bit of. Um, perspective to just with. I'm using the bottom of this A and the bottom of this E to make our changes. Oh, you know what? We don't want to do that yet. We want to make this a smart layer so that we can edit that text later. Uh, edit the layer later. The text layer later. Tongue twisters. Um, okay, so convert to smart object by right clicking, uh, which I just did. Convert to smart object. Uh, and then we're going to use that. And now we can go into the transform tool. And uh, like I said, you can manipulate this by pressing Alt uh, or Option and just adjusting it like so. It's a little, getting a little skewed here. What did we do? Okay. Now this is of course not accurate to the lens distortion that's happening in this, uh, but we're going to get it sort of close. 
ballpark it here. All right, uh, now we're going to jump right into the selection tools uh, because that's kind of where we need to um, uh, start manipulating this to make sure it blends into the brick wall. Um, what I'm going to use to do that, I'm going to go into select color range. And uh, in color range, uh, I'm just going to go through some of the options here. Uh, we're starting with sample colors. We're not going to be selecting the reds, greens, anything specific. That's probably some magentas. No, no magentas. Okay, but we're going to go uh, sample these colors. Um, it automatically starts you with an eyedropper tool, which is this first tool selected right here. Um, it also has a plus tool, which you will add to the selection, and a subtract tool, which you will subtract from the selection. But you don't have to uh, hit these tools specifically. You can press uh, Alt uh, or Option for the subtract and shift, excuse me, shift for the plus. Um, and that way you never have to go and toggle these tools. Uh, and let's just say, so right now we wanna select the bricks, uh, then the bricks are selected. Everything you see in white is your selection. Uh, since I held down the plus tool, I've basically selected everything, uh, but let's subtract some of these. Um, first of all, so let's talk about Right now I have this preview set to grayscale. Um, that's, you can set it to none, but you won't really know what you're selecting except by this preview window. window. This preview window. Uh, so make sure you set this to grayscale, or if you want, you can set it to uh, black matte, so everything, you'll still see the color of what you're selecting while you select it. So if I select the mortar, you'll see some of that start to come back in here. Um, or you can set it to white but I prefer grayscale, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but I wanna select these bricks. But you know what, we didn't talk about localized color clusters. We didn't talk about this. Let's back everything up and let's talk about this for a second. I'm gonna cancel all of this. I'm gonna go into my library and find an image we can work with. Uh, hopefully it's still there. Oh, and look. Here we go, we've got a, a lovely flower, lovely meadow. Um, but this is where the local, selecting uh, the local color, uh, localized color clusters can come into play. I want to select, let's turn this back to none. I want to select this, uh, just this flower in front. Okay, well, it's selecting all the reds. We don't want that. So let's go localize color. Um, I don't know why I decided to pick that one, but if I wanted to select one of the other flowers, I could, but I do want to select this flower. So if we turn this range up, it will start to select everything else. And you can grow the range based on what you select. So if I, let's say I, I, I get this really back down to where we were, but then I just want this flower, it's not selecting anything else. It's only selecting as you grow your selection by adding colors to it. Um, but I don't want any of this. I don't want this, I don't want that. Uh, in fact, I think I'm just gonna start over with the selection. If you uh, don't hold shift uh, uh, or uh, alt option, um, it will just start the selection over again. So, but I do want to make sure we do this real quick so we can maybe, you know, make something out of this. I'm selecting these red. Sorry for the blinking screen. Okay, there we go. This is good enough. Um, so now we have our flower selected. If we want to do something with that, we can create a new layer uh, just by hitting this plus sign down at the bottom or uh, control shift in or command shift in for a new layer. And um, I'm gonna call this flower. And while it's selected, I'm going to press control uh, or command shift C to copy and uh, control command shift V to paste. So now we've pasted this lone flower into our image, but you know, we can't leave it there, right? We have to make art, we have to do it. I'm gonna press control U to bring up our hue saturation and I'm gonna desaturate it, and oh my gosh. Beauty, adventure, drama, all this can be yours and more if you learn how to use the select color selection tools. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, let's get back to the garage. Um, 
we're going back to the garage now. So now we want to try and blend this. Uh, and I want to point this out too. If you, uh, you know what? Let's 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 take another break here. Let's just take a break and say hi to everybody. Um, hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, if you want to join our creative uh, cloud communities. Uh, please do so. The Photoshop Discord is bit.ly slash psdiscord. Uh, there's tons of mentors uh, in the Discord that can help you. Uh, if you have any questions, it's a great place. I promise you, you'll love it. Uh, but let's get back to the work at hand. All right, so here's our garage. We want to blend this type. We want to blend the type. Uh, by making a selection. I'm going to turn this off because what color uh, what color range does it will select everything uh, not just the layer you, you're on. I'm turning off the localized color clusters. Uh, there's also a skin tone, the detect faces and a skin tone feature. Uh, we're not dealing with any of that but it supposedly it helps you um, select skin tones uh, in a tighter range. But I want just the bricks here, just the bricks. I don't want much of this mortar, so I'm going to leave that out. I'm going to select OK. And then we're going to add a layer mask, keeping this selected. Turn the type layer back on, uh, and I'm going to uh, press this layer mask button down here at the bottom. Uh, you can also go into, I believe, uh, layer, layer mask reveal selection and that will do the same thing so now we have sort of blended type I mean it's it's kind of working um, let me pop into this a little bit you'll see that you know there's some issues there's like really crisp edges uh, we don't necessarily want that this is where you can get in here and uh, make some adjustments uh, speaking of adjustments you can also uh, if you want to delink your layer mask, we're not done here because if you want to delink your layer mask and make some uh, placement adjustments or uh, even change the perspective or whatever, uh, you can keep that mask uh, and make sure you select the layer, not the layer mask, and you can move this around and you can start to say, well, maybe this is better, maybe this is better. Now, for this example, we can't really move it too much because we set up a, a known perspective. You know, I can't move it over here and go, oh, that looks great. So I'm just gonna undo that. I, I kind of liked where we were. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that we're linked uh, back. Uh, oh, and just a, real quick, the way masks work, uh, white reveals and black uh, conceals, is that right? Uh, so if I wanted to do that, I'm just scribbling on the layer mask layer. I don't want it to keep any of that, but had to mention that because uh, you can rough up some of these edges if some of this you want more you want more paint chipping uh, you can rough up these edges with a texture brush and just kind of scrub out some of these like oh we don't want all of this to be pristine um, just to kind of give you a little bit more than just using that original selection um, and I'm not going to do too much because I want to show you guys something else. I'm going to step away from the garage for a minute and we're going to grab another image and I want to show you guys how to do the, some of this in a similar way. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we uh, pulled another image from stock.adobe.com. We have to have some type to work with. I'm going to shift, uh, press shift T to get back to my horizontal type. And I'm going to type all caps vintage in caps. Uh, make sure my layer is selected. We're going to bump this back up 250, maybe 200. Yeah. All right. And drag this into place. Maybe my my smart guides will help me center this. I don't know. Um, so, uh, oh, you know what? This is very dark. Let's choose a different color. I want to choose something in this range. Bring a little green into it, maybe. Make it a little darker. All right, so this is kind of a little bonus to this. Um, and we'll jump back to the garage before we end. But uh, here's uh, our sign. If you 
double click, you can get to some really nifty blending options. Um, oh, sorry, Windows. Uh, if you get into your layer styles, you'll see blend options right here. Uh, and you want to skip all the way down to blend if. And uh, this is using the luminosity of the layers. It deals with both the layer you're on, because it says this layer, and the layer that is below it, which is the one that we're mainly concerned with here. Uh, and this is going to just take away the dark. If you move the slider, and I'll just, I'll just show this. Uh, as we move if we move the slider from the dark edges it starts to eat into the dark uh, the darker parts of the image from below and likewise if I move reset this and I start to pull this down it's taking from the lighter images so you're already starting to get a little bit of like you know uh, uh, blending that's going on it's not the cleanest if we jump in here a little bit let me jump back into our blend, uh, and you'll see that it's it's kind of rough, not the cleanest, but if you hold down Alt or Option, you get a little slider. Uh, it breaks that slider in part, and it lets you have a little bit more range for a smoother blend. I'm more concerned with the dark areas of this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this holding down Alt or uh, Option, and I'm going to start sliding this. Let's see how far do we want to go okay so now we're getting most of the little cracks and yeah so that's that's looking okay that's looking all right so you can see the rusty bits are starting to uh, it'll be eliminated and that's nice um, but then we could even take this a little further and there's not a lot of options in here but if you want to use blend uh, blend modes uh, your layer blend modes um, if you think of the top portion, these top five are dealing with uh, uh, eliminating the lighter areas or using the darker areas. Uh, and the same thing with lighten, it's uh, elim eliminating the darker areas and using the lighter, image, uh, lighter parts of your, your image or whatever. In this case, it's our single tone uh, uh, font, so it's not, there's not a lot to work with. Um, but overlay kind of deals with the mid uh, the mid tones and honestly I like the overlay but I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times and it's really starting to just kind of blend in there um, the only thing that I would kind of be wary of is um, when you get in here uh, it is manipulating the color now where we've used our blend it's looking pretty good um, but it's still going to uh, affect any of the areas that, uh, you know, if you don't want it to appear like that's the color, uh, you're going to have to do some tweaking. Um, let's see. So, this kind of works for this image. You could, you know, maybe add a new one uh, and then take off. There's always this option. Let me hide these. Uh, I'm just going to take this all the way back. It's going to remove our uh, layer blend blend modes uh, blend blend mode blend what is it blend option blending options okay uh, but then you can just adjust this uh, on its own. Um, actually, you know what? Let's back it up. I want those blending options still on there. I just want to set this back to normal. And then we can adjust the opacity. It, you know that's always an option. And the same thing goes before uh, saying you can jump into your brush um, and also rough this up if you would like. Uh, you would have to rasterize the type, of course, uh, or make it a smart object. Um, but let's get back over to our brick wall real quick. Uh, so we we still have our options here. Uh, we can, let's do one thing, I don't know if we'll like it, but we'll try it. We'll try it. Into the options. I'm going to adjust this. Uh, so I'm hopping into, I just double clicked to get into um, the smart object. And I'm going to press Shift C to expand. Um, and if, I, if you hold down Alt or Option, it'll do both sides at the same time. I'm just making our canvas a little bigger. 
and you'll see why in a minute. I want to mix it up a little bit. I want to see something here real quick. First, I want to try to see if all of this worked. I want to change this uh, text to BBQ, e oh, let's go caps, let's go caps, B BBQ, yum. Let's see, if we close this out, it, it's gonna ask us to save, yes, and then we have our BBQ, yum. It doesn't really look great, so let's just go back to where we are with the garage. Uh, I'm going to jump back into this. Um, oh, you know what? I have to make this adjustment again because I hit undo, but this won't take too long. There we go. Hit enter. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to uh, press shift F5 to fill. I'm going to fill this with white. Uh, and I'm just going to make this an inversion, almost invert. Oh, my caps lock is still on, so that's why we're hitting tab and having our... Sorry about that. Uh, but if you select garage, uh, holding down command, uh, controller command, um, and you come back up here to your uh, invert layer, delete. Now we can remove the garage. And let's see what that looks like. Yes. And we get like an inverted version of that. Um, it's okay. It's not great, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Uh, we'll, we'll go back and not make that work. Um, but you know what you can do as well as another way to blend this in. Um, and I wanted to make sure to, to, uh, show this before we leave. We used those so selections, the color selections earlier to make, select the bricks. You could select the mortar joints if you wanted to and you would only have that show up. But you can also go into this as a little added, like a little bit of like in tandem. You can uh, also jump into the double tap your layer, get into these blending options, and then start working with the underlying layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and do what we did before where you start to see some of this. And you can see this is not the best, but uh, breaking this by hitting, uh, pressing Alt and dragging this blend over, it really starts to give you some nuance in the, in those shadows. Uh, but it is using the luminosity of the image, so keep that in mind. Um, and uh, that's a good way to kind of like, let's see, let's go ahead and confirm that and then we'll back out and take a look. And you can see a difference, there's a clear difference. Um, they're just two of the same ways to kind of uh, get to um, uh, similar but adjacent ways of blending the type. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this. Uh, let me just check. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out with us today. Uh, I want to be sure to say uh, to... Go into, uh, to get into our Discord, go to bit.ly uh, slash psdiscord, and uh, you'll find tons of mentors. Uh, there's a bunch of descriptions and resources below as well. Um, stay tuned for what's coming up next. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great programming coming up. Um, and uh, you know what? We'll see you guys soon. Uh, very soon, actually. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for another one. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.